Hi, this is Sam McGuire again, and we're going to be talking about Soundtrack Pro scripts. Scripts are something you can use to help make your workflow even more efficient. These work inside Soundtrack Pro, they work in Final Cut Pro, and they work in the Finder as well. So we're going to explore just how to do this. So I've got a file all loaded up, and what we're going to do is at some point we need to decide what kind of processor to do on this. We're going to use an equalizer first. This allows us to change the frequency content. We're going to talk almost exclusively in hypotheticals today, meaning we're not necessarily going to talk about how to use the effects or in which cases to use which effects, but just how to use the scripting feature. So say that we find there's a curve we use a lot. This could be it right here to roll out some of the high frequency to bring down some of the brightness and it could be a little bit of a bass roll off as well, or a high pass filter, which allows us to get rid of some of the ultra low frequencies. So combination like this. What we can do then is apply this to the file. It's gonna apply it to the whole thing here. Once it's done, you'll see now it's rendering out the graphics. Once it's done with that, we can now take that curve and create a script from it. Of course, anytime we can come in here and change it, but let's create a script from this. And so what we're going to do is save as Apple script. And this has a default folder, which we're going to leave it here. We're going to give this a name. We need to remember it by EQ. And this is really a low pass and a high pass. So we'll do low pass and a high pass. Now, if we're doing a lot of these, you want to come up with something a little bit more descriptive than even this, because that's pretty generic, but this will at least tell us for the moment that we're doing a low pass and a high pass. Let's click save. And now a couple things happen. First of all, you saw I just saved that. Let's go into Final Cut for a moment. I can right click on any audio on a sequence, send to soundtrack pro script eq low pass high pass choose this it's actually going to take the file open it up in soundtrack pro it's going to render out those effects which is doing right now okay once we're done we should see a change visually Decently long file, so it's taking just a moment to do it. And then it closes it. Doesn't even leave it open. Comes in here. Now that is applied to this audio region in your Final Cut sequence. In fact, if we hadn't had the other thing in the soundtrack open, it would have just gone right back to Final Cut Pro. It does open up Soundtrack Pro to do that process. But you don't have to remember anything. You don't have to insert any effects. It'll do all the work and then close the file and then come in here and it'll save it as a Soundtrack Pro sent file. So now we could come back to send to Soundtrack Pro audio file project. And you'll see here's that file still with that effect on it rendered out. Now this one actually had two others that were affected previously, but they were bypassed. So they're not actually even in play at this point. But this one is actually live and processed. We can close this. We could make changes at that point, tweak it, save it, close it, and it would be updated here inside Final Cut. So that's one of the ways that this is integrated into the Final Cut Pro workflow. Once you save those as Apple scripts or scripts in Soundtrack, they become accessible through Final Cut Pro. Now another really cool thing with this is even if you're not opening things up in Final Cut Pro, but you just want to do that outside of either one of these, open scripts folder. Let's open up another folder here. And we'll find just some random file. Drag it onto this script, which we could put anywhere in the finder. And it's going to do the exact same thing. So it'll open up Soundtrack Pro, render this out. You can see it's taking a moment here. And so you can save all these on your desktop in a file someplace. 
drag audio files onto those, it will process them using an entire list of actions here. It can be EQ, some dynamics control. Technically, you can do noise reduction, although that's not recommended, and on from there. Okay, so now we've looked at how you can do that from the Finder. We've also looked at how you can do that from Final Cut Pro. You can also use them straight from Soundtrack Pro if you want. So three different places where you can have access to those scripts. A couple words of warning, though. You need to actually double-check the script for the first time when you do it. As with a few things in Soundtrack Pro, it's still really trying to be a really amazing application. There's a few things which you really have to watch out for. One of them is creating scripts that don't necessarily represent what you told to do in the first place. This happened to me. I'm going to make a selection just for this. Command L, which brings up a, a normalized function. And you can set how loud you want it to be. Zero for peak means take it all the way as loud as you can go up to the loudest peak. But RMS means you want to normalize it to an average level. So instead of the actual loudest point, it's an average level. And I found that when you create scripts using RMS, it'll switch back to peak. And so this is one of those areas where I can't set any scripts to set the RMS level. So that's one of the things you have to really be careful about. You have to test this out. I found that for the most part, how I'll use this. I'll use this for equalization, some different curves that I really find very useful. Sometimes it's not necessarily like the telephone effect, but something similar for a specific project. Say you have hours and hours of footage from a single location when you're doing a documentary, then you may want to have a EQ curve, which you've used on one, and just drag them to all the others. And this may be you've gotten better results with these EQs than the ones in Final Cut itself, and so you can create them there. Also, Sometimes with reverb, I really like the Space Designer reverb. And so it's nice to be able to set some stuff up with that. I also really like using the limiter and compressor in here. So these are tools that I'm very comfortable with. And when I do editing in Final Cut, I'll typically have some set up for a specific project and start pulling those in using the scripting to really make my workflow more efficient. Okay, things that you shouldn't do. First of all, you can process using noise reduction, but those are terrible for scripts because you need to really do a custom noise print for each of those. So anything that needs a custom setup for each particular situation is going to be a bad idea for scripting. And so I would steer away from that. Okay, that's scripting. Hope you enjoy it and find that it's very useful in increasing your workflow. It does create a little setup time, but once you have it set up, it can be very useful.